Okay, before I begin, I uh, just want to say that I'm not the biggest fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. In fact, the only times I've ever actually, you know, uh, looked them up was when they appeared on TV shows. I don't know the comic books, so I'm just like a newbie to this universe. And speaking of that, uh, this is one big universe. This is a big step for Marvel because this is one you just can't like read and immediately know everything about the character and where he's coming from, where he's going. This is a whole new world and you know new structures, new species and really this movie doesn't bother explaining much because most of the time it's easy to grasp. They still have a similar society to the rest of us. Uh, and that's great, you know, you know, ease the people into it. You know, don't over overwhelm them. And that's why part of me is glad but at the same time disappointed that the Nova Corps uh, don't present themselves the best as they can be. Uh, for those of you who do know, the Nova Corps, you know, have these uh, cosmic powers that are granted to them through their helmets. So, not to, to see, to see not, them not use that and just, you know, they're the basic police force with, you know, vehicles. It is a bit disappointing, but at the same time, it, it's good because then the focus would have been taken off the Guardians and people would be questioning who the hell these Nova Corps are and why do they have these powers. So, in a way, it's good that they didn't do that. You know, it, this whole new universe is overwhelming enough, especially uh, that one scene where we see the cosmic being who's been decapitated and floating in space, and that was just like, whoa, 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 who the hell is this cosmic being, and how the hell does his head get cut off? But, either way, right off the bat, uh, you're probably wondering what's with the, with the thumbnail. Uh, well, what I'm saying is, is, I'm not saying it is actually better, but while I was watching this movie, I felt like there were very sim uh, very similar moments that the Avengers also did, and at times, I almost felt like, you, it almost felt this movie did those parts a little bit better than Avengers. Um, I saw what those parts are, for me personally, was, of course, comedy. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy... Throughout the whole thing, you almost feel like it was nothing but a comedy. But it does have great suspenseful moments, and great drama, and a great relationship between all these characters. These characters, I actually cared for and was very interested in all their backstories. The Avengers, while it had comedy, really only came from the fact that they were the more popular characters. You would know them more, and to see these people interact, that's where the comedy came from. Uh, but the comedy from Guardians of the Galaxy came more from their own personalities and these these are the kinds of people they are. And that really stuck with me. Uh, but either way, um, with the Avengers, they had all these single movies based on just one character. Introducing Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Hulk, even though technically they changed it a bit. And, you know, to... to so you can like sympathize with them, know where they're coming from before this happened. And but when it came to the Avengers, their team up almost felt like a little um, rushed. You know, Thor just came out of nowhere, even on the, his movies, the the bridge was destroyed, and he's just there saying, "Oh yeah, uh, my father, he brought me back." Okay, we'll just uh, go with it. This is the Avengers. But with Guardians of the Galaxy, I felt their team up was actually naturally earned, like. I can I can believe that all of them ended up being there in the first place, you know, in that situation, and now being forced to work together until it got to the point where they realized that they gotta stop being selfish. You know, there's this higher calling out there, or this time, or this time and place to stop being selfish and caring about all of yourself and actually do something with your life. So. I actually like those heartfelt moments they had with the together when they were saying, you know what, we are losers. We're we're the criminals. We're we're not we're the underdog. We have no call to fame or we have no right to call ourselves heroes, but we have this chance to do something good. Why not take it? Why not at least have one thing um great about uh us behind our behind us you know instead of having this dark past and tragic um 
story, you know, to define us. And it really felt great. Now, granted, there were moments where uh, there, it felt rushed, especially the whole romantic uh, relationship between Gamora and Star-Lord. When, when it started uh, off, it was like, okay, he's hitting on her. But then when Gamora actually starts, you know, liking him a bit more, it's like, I don't know. She seems a little too battled hardened to fall for this so fast. You know, it's just happening too fast. Even when he's risking his life, I can understand that one. When he risked his life, I can understand why she'd be, like, more interested in him. But everything else just felt a little rushed. Now, granted, it didn't end with a big kiss scene or hug scene. It just... She just shows she has interest in him. Maybe it'll develop more. But at the same time, uh, moments felt like it was too rushed. Now, whether they develop on this uh, better in the second movie, great. But then, even the ending, explaining why Star-Lord doesn't die from a certain... Uh, uh, event it also felt rushed and it felt like it could have led to a, sequ a sequel as to discovering more about Star-Lord's father who turns out to be you know not entirely human but it almost feels like oh that's why I didn't die cool bye it's like okay and I guess there's no need for an explanation or no curiosity just something that happened alright now Immediately, I'm finally I am glad to see Thanos. Thanos has this presence. He's there. You know, he's not like oh, you can see part of his face smiling. Like no, he is there, and he is just as intimidating and badass as I always wanted him to be. Um, although I'm, I'm wondering how he's gonna get the his the Infinity Stone from this movie, uh, in Avengers three or maybe even Avengers four. Who knows how long it's gonna take before Thanos comes in because he's a big big bad. And with the Infinity Gauntlet that he's working on, you know, it'll take more the, than the Avengers have at this current moment. So I'm wondering now exactly how long will it be before Avengers actually have to take on Thanos. Maybe until the fourth movie. And that's a great build-up. You know, as to Guardians of the Galaxy come to Earth because they heard Thanos is going to come to Earth to destroy Earth using the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, it's this test uh, subject, you know? But... Either way, I know it's going to be major buildup, and I can't wait for Thanos to finally just come in and just start blowing shit up. Um, the Collector. Uh, now, when I saw him for the first time in the end credit scene of Thor 2, I thought he'd play a much bigger role. And he does. He does play a role, but it's more to show how dangerous the Infinity Stone is, and then he's gone from the rest of the movie. Um... Well, it's true, the Collector hasn't been much of a villain in, you know, past comics or TV shows or anything like that. He, it still felt like he deserved a bigger part than just, yeah, I want the stone, but oh no, the stone went under control. Boom, now you know how dangerous it is. Bye. And my collection is destroyed. It's like, okay. But however, I did like how he appeared again at the end credit scene of this movie, and it led to... Possibly the greatest lead into the next Marvel movie ever, if they're gonna make a Marvel movie of this. Because when I saw the end credit scene, I couldn't help but just sit there, laugh, and just say, Oh my god, this has to be a movie. I can wait, you know, for Avengers 3 or, you know, Captain America 2 or 3. I can wait for any other Marvel movie, you know, as long as it takes, but I need to see this movie be made oh man that it hit it made me feel just like ecstatic about i'm hoping they actually do make a movie about uh the character they introduced at the end the, at the end credit scene because that was just woo. <laughs> uh but either way again uh ronin great villain you know he's intimidating he and now, I don't know exactly what he has a problem with. Maybe he just doesn't like peace. Uh, but they even state like he's unhappy with the peace treaty that these two planets have. And he wants to destroy it. He wants to destroy one planet. Uh, maybe he's just war hungry and wants power. Uh, or maybe there's something... Uh, he has some prejudice against these people. Or because they did something to him. That's why he goes out and destroys people's families. It's like, 
Who knows? They don't really go into that man's backstory much. You know, there there's clearly something a little deeper than uh, just, you know, he's bad. Boom. Done. But they don't go into much detail about that. They just show him to be a power-mad dictator who wants to destroy and just show off his power. They want everyone to look at him like, bow down to me kind of thing. He doesn't state it outright, but it's clear he just wants people to acknowledge him. He hates that he has to look up to Thanos, and Thanos just keeps calling him boy and disrespecting him. It's like, damn it, I want more power. I want Thanos to look up at me. You know, it's like, okay, you know, he clearly has a motivation as to where the motivation came from, what kind of backstory he has. We have nothing of that in this movie and it kind of just saddens me like okay here's another villain we don't know much about yeah and even Thanos we don't know much about we just know he's you know he's big he's threatening he's like okay but why and where is he coming from what's he what's his motivation so I'm hoping they with all this build up Thanos will at least get a backstory to him and him alone because I really want to see this uh but either way Guardians of the Galaxy, great movie. It has a great comedy. In fact, it's comedy all throughout. There was, like, at moments, uh, I felt like, oh, no, is this going to be intrusive to the fights and the drama? Like, no, it's not. It actually does have, have a good balance. It has more comedy than most other Marvel movies, but it knows when to stop and actually take things seriously, and I was thankful for that. Uh... As the characters go, I loved all of them. They were great. Their backstories were great. And it was, you know, quick. You know, they just showed, not told. You know, they said, you know, Rocket Raccoon, uh, genetic experimentation. And he knows it. And he hates it. And it's like, oh, wow. And you see, you see the cybernetics popping out of his back and how tortured he is. Like, damn, you know, right there. And that's only like five minutes of explanation. Like, all right, we get it. We know where this guy's coming from. We know why he's so pent up with rage, not just because he's you know he's a little guy, but because of because he's a little guy, he was taken advantage of, and that that really hit me right here in the heart. Even uh, Drax's backstory made sense. You know, it also showed you know how tragic of a person he became, just mindlessly going out and attacking people, and in the hopes of taking down Ronan. And really showing up that he can't really take him on by himself. Gamora, you know, Thanos' daughter, you know, taken from her home and actually experimented on and with cybernetics and cybernetics exactly like Rocket. And it's like all of them have great backstories and it's only a few minutes of explanation. And then most of the time it's showing what's been done to them. It's like, this is great. They don't need single movies dedicated to each character to build us up and make us feel like really uh we need to be behind these people these are the heroes we really want them to succeed they just needed to have great characters and small moments of uh, just explaining and then showing the rest of the pain and what the after effects were and that's why i really love this movie this movie for me at certain moments felt like they were doing something a lot better than the Avengers did. Other times, probably not. Maybe the Avengers did better in action scenes. It's Again, it's up to opinion. Me personally, I almost felt like of Guardians of the Galaxy was the better movie. Uh, but either way, uh, great movie. Can't wait to, for the sequel. Uh, it's probably going to be another Infinity Stone because I can't imagine Avengers having another Infinity Stone behind them. Because uh, I doubt Age of Ultron is going to have anything space related. It's mostly going to be technology coming up and threatening everyone. So probably the sequel Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be the one that focuses more on the Infinity Stones. That's going to build up Thanos. Thanos is going to find a way to get all the Infinity Stones. He's going to come to Earth you know, to test it out. But then Guardians of the Galaxy hear about this, come to Earth, you know, meet the Avengers, tell them, yay, we got to prepare for the this guy's attack. And it's just going to be all out war. It's just going to be chaos. Either way, I'm excited. I can't wait for the this whole thing to just climax. You know, this whole build up. It just felt like from the very beginning, they were building up to Thanos and Thanos alone. And just that thought alone is getting me so 
Oh my, I, I can't even describe how I feel and how much anxiety and excitement I'm feeling about that. Either way, until then, I'm Tony Dragon. Bye-bye.